everyone. I hope you're doing well today. Welcome to this gentle flow class. Please get ready to start this class with everything that you might need. Blocks, pillows, maybe a blanket. And then when you're ready, please come to sit. Cross your legs. Maybe sit on top of a pillow or a block. Keeping your spine in a neutral position. And your hands either resting on your legs or in your lap. If it's okay for you, close your eyes. Otherwise, keep a soft, relaxed gaze on the floor in front of you. Let's take a moment to fully arrive on our yoga mat. Not only with the body, but with the mind as well. Acknowledge your surroundings. Noticing the sounds, noises, smells in the air, maybe pets or people around you. Refrain from judging those surroundings. Simply notice. Then become aware of your own posture. No need to change anything or to adjust your position. Instead, place your awareness on those areas of your body that are in contact with the ground beneath. The feet, the legs, the sit bones. Grounding yourself in the present moment, in the place where you are in this specific moment. This month, May, we are dedicating the focus of our classes to the earth element. Mother Earth is the mother that we all share, we all have in common. In May, here in Europe and across the world, there is Mother's Day. But many of us don't know their own mother or that don't really have a good relationship with them. However, we can all count on Mother Earth, which is always there to support us with a soil where to walk on, where to practice yoga, air to breathe, food to eat, people to love. And then notice how your posture is supported by the ground beneath. Notice the length of your spine with its natural curvatures. The weight of the arms and the hands resting on the legs and the head floating on top of it. Aware of physical sensations, whether pleasant or unpleasant, or the absence of them. Aware of feelings and emotions as well. or the absence of them. Finally, become aware of your own breath. No need to breathe in any special way. Just follow a few of your own inhalations and exhalations. If you have difficulties in finding your own breath, you can place one hand on the belly and the other one on your chest. It might help you to notice this rising and falling sensation of the breath.
Then join your palms in Namaste in front of your heart center, setting your intention for the practice today. Perhaps you can remind yourself why you're practicing yoga. Why are you doing this? To honor our intention, I'm gonna chant one Om. If you like, you can join me. Inhaling. Oh. And as a gesture of respect, let's bow in front of ourselves. Then open your eyes if you haven't already. If you're sitting on a pillow or a block, please release it, just keep it next to you. We might want to use it. So come with your sit bones directly on the floor. Keep your legs crossed if you like, just change the leg that is in front. We begin with some spinal movement. Rolling the head, making circles with the neck. So we drop the chin down and we start slowly and mindfully to rotate the neck. Aware if there are any tensions in the area of the neck, of the throat area, on the shoulders. Then change the direction of the circles if you haven't already and continue to notice any physical sensations if there are. Then come back to the center and we start making circles this time from your hips allowing the rest of the torso to respond to this movement. Notice if the shoulders are lifting up, maybe tensing a bit and see if you can release them down. Aware also if there are any tension in the face muscles, maybe in the forehead or maybe on the jawbone line. Reverse the direction of the circles if you haven't already. And notice if you have the tendency to go fast. Maybe this is a tendency that you keep also throughout the day in your daily life. And see instead if you can slow down and look for more quality in your movement. Again, aware of physical sensations. And then release, coming back to the center. Drop your right hand down on the floor. The same ear to the shoulder. For a side flexion, maybe extend the opposite arm if the left shoulder is okay with this type of movement. If it's easy, you can walk your hands slightly further toward the right. You can even come down on the forearms, but make sure that the opposite knee is not lifting up so you're not falling on one side. Instead, focus in elongating the left side of your torso with your chest opening so you rotate your torso and the chest is opening up to the ceiling instead of falling down to the floor. If the neck doesn't bother you, you can look up to the ceiling, otherwise simply look down on the floor. As you exhale next time, drop the upper arm all the way down and come back to the center, posing for a moment before we go on the other side, just to check how now the two sides of the torso feel, if there is any difference maybe in between them. And then we go on the other side, so we release the left hand down on the floor, the same ear to the shoulder, maybe opposite arm elongating and coming up to the ceiling for our side flexion on the other side. If you're familiar with the Ujjayi breath, the breath is sound contracting the throat, you can use that type of breathing if you want to use that type of breathing technique. Otherwise, I encourage you to allow the breath to flow naturally in and out through the nose, occasionally breathing out through the mouth. As you exhale next time, release the upper arm and come back to the center. Release your hands behind you with the fingers facing your buttocks and unleash your legs so that the feet are down on the floor. Swing your knees toward one side, back up to the center and down on the other side. 
Now checking with the hips and the knees, how those joints are doing. Is everything flowing or is there any stiffness, rigidity? Make sure that the shoulders are still relaxed. We don't sink the neck in between the shoulders. So there is a bit of activation in the arms as well. And then next time that you are on the right side or anyway toward the front of your mat, then swing all the way forward, come into a tabletop position with your hands and knees on the floor. Noticing this contact between the ground and the hands. Position your hands so that the fingers are spread and then from here, as you inhale for cow pose, start arching the back, your chest move forward, looking straight or slightly up. As you exhale, release the dorsal of the feet down, start rounding the spine one vertebra at a time. Keep your gaze to the belly for the cat position. And again, inhaling, tucking the toes, cow pose, extending the spine, chest moving forward. Exhale in cat position, flexing the spine and round. One more time like this, inhale in cow pose. Exhale in cat. Come back to a neutral position, engaging the core so that you are in one line. And then extend the right arm in front of you and the left leg back. The foot can be on the floor or lifted up. Continue to engage the core here, inhaling. And as you exhale, bring the elbow to the opposite knee. Inhaling, come back to extension. Exhale, bend. One last time, inhale, extend and open. Exhale, bend. Inhale, come back to extension, stay here. Bend the left knee and twist over your right side. Now stay here, looking behind you, or you can look down on the floor. Maybe some of you can grab the foot, lifting slightly higher up. You go into a back bend, so careful here. And then release, come back to extension first, and back down into a tabletop. Open the knees wider to the sides of your mat. The buttocks reach into the heels. For a head down on the floor, for balasana, child pose. Breathing in, breathing out, breathing in, breathing out. Inhaling, come back up to a tabletop position, adjusting the support, hands and knees. Core act active, and then a left arm in front of you, right leg back. Inhale here. Exhale, bend and round. Inhale, open. Exhale, close. Inhale, open. Exhale, close. Inhale, open and stay, bending the right knee. And as you exhale, twist to your left this time. Stay or maybe grab the foot. And again, if looking behind you bothers the neck or you're losing the balance, just look down on the floor. Inhaling, come back to extension. Exhale, release down. We pivot on the right knee, coming to Vasisthasana variation, the side plank. So the left leg is extended to the back of the mat. Option to extend the left arm to the ceiling. Maybe looking up or again, look down on the floor. If it's easy, you can lift up the back leg, maybe flexing the foot. Continue to breathe in here. And then slowly as you exhale, release the knee and the hand down on the floor and we pivot on the other side. So on the left knee, extending the right leg to the back of the mat for side plank on the other side. Again, stay or a bit more active if you lift up the back leg, flexing the foot. And as you exhale next time, release everything down. For thread the needle, as you inhale, your right arm reaching up, rotate the torso, look up. Exhale, pass under the left arm. Stay active here, almost like you want to serve a plate to your left side. Inhale, come back up to the ceiling, looking up. Exhale, pass under the left arm. We do one more time. Inhale, moving up. 
Exhale, pass under and stay, this time releasing the right shoulder toward the floor, maybe completely on the floor. Make sure the hips stay to the center, they don't swing also to the left. Option to extend the other arm completely to the top of your mat. Keep your gaze to your right hand when it is on the floor. Breathe in. Breathe out. One more. Breathe in. Breathe out. Press your left hand on the floor under the shoulder and press up back to tabletop, other side. Inhaling left arm reaching up to the ceiling, rotating, looking up. Exhale, passing under the right arm, serving this plate to the right. Inhaling, moving up, open. Exhale, pass under. Last one, inhale, moving up. Exhale, release, all the way down. Maybe extending the right arm to the front of your mat. Two breaths. Place your right hand on the floor under the right shoulder and press up. Tuck your toes, pressing up and back into Adho Mukha Svanasana, downward facing dog. Pedal in your feet so you bend one knee at a time. Maybe even slightly twisting your dog, so if you bend more one knee and the other, you leave it extended. You can twist to one on one side and then repeating to do the opposite side. Feel free to wave your dog. Bending the knees and bending the elbows. And then walking your hands to your feet, so all the way backward. Bending the knees here. Leave your left hand down on the floor and as you inhale, your right arm reaches up to the ceiling. Exhale, release down. Your right hand down on the floor, we go on the other side, inhale, in left arm reaching up. Exhale, down. Let's repeat. Inhale, right arm to the ceiling. Exhale, down. Inhale, left arm up. Exhale, down. Walk your hands to the front of the mat, followed by your feet. As you inhale next time, slowly unfold your spine one vertebra at a time so that you can come up to stand in Tadasana. Your head is the last thing coming up. Place your feet together, hands together in Samasthiti Hi. Sura Namaskara A, Sun Salutation. As you inhale, reach up with your arms, maybe looking up. Exhale and fold forward, bend the knees as you need and keep your gaze to the knees. Inhaling halfway up, hands on the legs, extend the spine. Exhale, hands on the floor, easy step back to plank, knees on the floor, half chaturanga. Inhaling, reaching up for cobra pose. Exhaling, pressing back, either into child pose or maybe downward facing dog. For three nice breaths in here. One. In down dog, keep the knees slightly bent. Two, and the gaze to the knees. Three, if you are in child pose, come up to the dog. And with your next inhalation, step or walk your feet to the front of the mat for halfway up, extending the spine, crown of the head reaching forward. Exhale, release down and fold. Inhale, rise all the way up, arms reaching up. Exhale, Samasthiti Hi. One more round. Inhale, in arms reaching up, Urdha Stasana. Exhale, fold forward, Uttanasana. Inhale, in halfway up, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, hands on the floor, step back, Chaturanga Dandasana. Feel free to use the knees down. Inhale, in pressing up, either Cobra or Urdha Mukha Svanasana. Exhale. Adho Mukha Svanasana, downward facing dog, or maybe child pose instead. One. Two. Keep a steady breath if possible. And three. 
With your next inhalation, step or walk your feet to the front of your mat for halfway up. Exhale, fold. Inhale, rise all the way up, arms reaching up. Exhale in, Samasthiti. Padangusasana, separating the feet, hips in the apart. As you inhale, arms reaching up. Exhale, fold forward with your index and middle fingers, catching your big toes. Bend the knees as you need in here. Inhale, extend the spine and exhale, fold any amount. Keep your gaze in between the legs, the elbows opening outside. Release the shoulders, avoid to create tension in between the neck and the shoulders. Crown of the head reaching down for the mat. Allow a bit of body weight to stay also on the inside of your legs. One more breath in here. And as you inhale next time, extend your spine and release your hands. Move your feet wider to the outside of your mat so that you can squat down for Malasana Yogi squat. Maybe a high squat, maybe a lower squat. If the heels don't touch the floor, no worries. You might want to use blocks under your feet. If you need your hands in front of you for support, go ahead, maybe also on a block. Otherwise, keep them in Namaste and try to keep a spine nice and tall. Keep your gaze dristy in front of you. And as you inhale next time, we twist to the right side with the left hand coming closer to the floor, maybe touching, and the right hand moving up to the ceiling. As you exhale next time, come back to the center. We go on the other side. Inhale, left arm reaching up. Exhale, come back to the center. Release the hands down, drop the head and roll up. As you move up, place your feet together. And as you inhale next time, arms reaching up to the ceiling. Exhale, fold forward with your arms passing over the head, maybe interlacing the fingers if possible. Keep your gaze to the knees. As you inhale next time, release your hands down on the floor and step your right foot all the way back. Release the knee down on the floor, arms reaching all the way up, low lunge variation. Exhale, interlace your fingers on your left knee and gently press forward. Keep your gaze down on the floor in front of you, the shoulders relax down. Careful here, don't press too much forward. You want to feel an elongation on the inside of your hips and the thighs, but not too much. Inhale, moving up. Exhale, release the hands toward the floor, extending the front leg and flexing the front foot. If you can't reach the floor with your hands, again, use the blocks or thick books. And maybe adjust this position, sliding the front foot a bit further forward. Keep your gaze relaxed down on the floor, the spine either straight or maybe you need to round it a bit. Feel free to bend the front knee if it hurts. This is really intense as a stretching in the hamstrings and also on the calf muscles. So if it's too intense, then bend the knee. Then let's bend more the knee so that we can place the foot down on the floor in between our hands and leave the right hand completely down on the floor. Inhale, left arm reaching up to the ceiling, open and twist. Exhale, pass under your left knee. Inhale, come up and twist, open. Exhale, release down. Last time, inhale, come up, listen. Exhale, laser pose your left hand on the inside of your left foot. Move foot and hand to the left edge of your mat so that you have a nice space in between the shoulders and the chest. Stay here or if it's easy you can release the forearms down on the floor and maybe also extend the back leg, lifting up the back knee. Keep your gaze down on the floor. Avoid to sink with the neck in the shoulders. If you're down on the floor, arms come up with your hands and the back knee down on the floor. Nice semicircle with your left hip. 
Tuck your toes on the floor, inhale, rise up with your torso, hands on your lower back. For camel pose, Ustrasana, moving the hips forward, the chest is opening, the shoulder blades coming closer together on your back. Keep your chin to your chest or maybe release the head down if the front neck is okay with that. If it's easy, you can release one hand on the heel at the time, just one second and then on the other side, or maybe you can do both. Careful not to sit with the hips down on the heels, otherwise you lose the back bend. And keep elongating the spine, so don't crunch here in the lower back. Imagine that you are creating space in the vertebras, reaching up to the ceiling first and then opening into the back bend. To come back with your chin on the chest and the hands on the lower back, release the hands on the floor in front of you. Sitting in Balasana Child Pose with the forearms down on the floor and joining your hands in Namaste over the head, stretching a bit the shoulders here. Take a moment to acknowledge your own breath. Maybe you can hear it here resonating between you and the mat beneath. And then leave your hands down on the floor, press up, back to a tabletop position, tuck the toes, downward facing dog. Inhale, step or walk your feet to the front of the mat, halfway up. Exhale, fold. Inhale, in, rising all the way up. Exhale, Sama City. Inhale, hands moving up. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, in, your arms passing over the head, gaze to the knees, stay here. As you inhale next time, hands down on the floor, stepping your left foot all the way back, your knee down on the floor, rising up with your torso and the arms, and as you exhale, interlace your fingers on your right knee, gently pressing forward. Stay here for a couple of breaths. As you inhale next time, come up, half split, extend the front leg, flexing the foot and adjusting the position so that it fits you best today. Two breaths. Move your foot back in between your hands, the left and down on the floor. Inhale, right arm reaching up to the ceiling. Exhale, pass under the right knee. Inhale, back up for two. Exhale, down. Inhale, rise up last time. Exhale, laser pose, right hand on the inside of your right foot, moving the foot to the edge of the mat. Stay or lower yourself with the forearms down on the floor or on a block. Two more breaths in here. Release the left knee down on the floor, hands on the floor, stepping the right knee back close to the left one. For Virasana, hero pose, sit on the heels. Maybe you can separate the feet and release the buttocks down on the floor. If it doesn't touch, please don't stay hanging in there and place the block underneath the buttocks. Maybe you need two blocks or maybe a cushion. Keep your knees slightly separated at the same level of your hips. Your hands are resting on the knees. The spine is nice and long, your chin parallel to the floor. We look just in front of us on the floor. You can stay here or you can place your hands behind you with the fingers facing the feet for Supta Virasana. It's going to be more intense as a stretching in the quotes muscles. Careful that the knees are still in contact with the floor. You can also bend the elbows and going all the way down on the forearms or maybe even lowering down with the head down on the floor. Let's take a couple of long breaths either in Virasana or Supta Virasana. 
noticing the qualities of your own breath. Is it deep or shallow? Does it have a fast or slow pace? If you're down, press with your arms, your chin to the chest, moving all the way up, your hands in front of you. Tucking the toes and coming up into down dog, allow a bit of a shaking of your legs or just walking the feet in one place. And then inhaling right leg reaching up, point the foot. Exhale, step your right foot in between the hands and rise up for warrior two, Virabhadrasana two. Have a look to your front knee, if it's going in, try to open to the right side because the hips are opening in opposite direction. Breathing in, breathing out. Inhaling, extend the front knee for Trikonasana Triangle Pose. As you exhale, lower your right hand anywhere on the front leg. Careful here, you might want to keep the front knee slightly bent. If the upper shoulder is bothering you, just release the hand on your back. We don't stay here longer. Let's look down on the floor, bend in the front knee, inhaling back up to warrior two. Exhale, reverse your warrior. So you do a side flexion to the back of your mat. Inhaling back to warrior two. Exhale, Parshvokanasana, extend the side angle, releasing the forearm on the front knee. Careful here, a bit of body weight to the back knee as well, not everything pressing on the front. Inhaling back up to warrior two. Exhale here. Inhale. Exhale, release your hands down, your back heel up, square your hips and step your right foot all the way back. Take a moment here to reset before we go on the other side. Inhaling, left leg reaching up, pointing the foot. Exhale, step your left foot in between the hands, reaching up. Warrior two on the left side. Again, checking here the stability, the core, the essence of your warrior. Is it a peaceful warrior? Or maybe is it an angry warrior? Deep breath in here, extending the front knee. Exhale in Trikonasana Triangle Pose, going all the way down. And as you inhale, rise up, bending the front knee, back to Warrior Two. Exhale, reverse your Warrior, in a side flexion to the back of your mat. Inhaling back to Warrior Two. Exhaling, extend the side angle, Parjvokanasana. As you in the next time, rise up, warrior two, stay here, exhale. Breathing in, breathing out, breathing. Exhale, release the hands down on the floor and this time step your right foot next to the left one to the front of your mat. Rising slowly all the way up into Tadasana. Big step to the back of your mat, either right or left, so that you can face the device that you are using. As you inhale, your arms reaching up in a five point star. Exhale, go the pose, bend the knees and bend the elbows, the feet and the knees pointing out. Inhale, rise up. Exhale, down. Inhale, up. Exhale, down. Inhale up, exhale down. Release your hands on the inside of your tights. Inhale in here. Exhale in, twisting to your right side, the gaze to the upper shoulder. Inhale in, back to the center. Exhale in, counter twisting, other side. One more time, inhale in, back to center. Exhale, twist it right. Inhale, in center. Exhale, in left. Inhale, center. 
exhale, exhale, release and fold, hooking the opposite elbow and gently swinging side to side. Gaze in between the legs. Keep the knees slightly bended. Come back to the center, drop the hands down and roll up. Hop or close your feet together. Come into the front of your mat. From here for three pose, place your hands in Namaste, Vikrasana. Hold the body weight to your right leg, the left knee rising up, open to the left. Try not to use your hand and place the left foot anywhere on the inside of your right leg. Try to root down through the standing leg. Finding the support down on the ground to keep your tree reaching up. Your spine is elongating, the crown of the head is reaching up for the ceiling. You gaze on the floor that help you with the stability. I'm sure that some of you are losing the balance just because you are looking at me and I'm also floating here in my tree pose so it can put you out of balance. Come back with your left knee to the center and fly back into warrior three. Your torso and the back leg parallel to the floor and the hands are resting next to your buttocks. Then leave your left foot down on the floor and rise up with your arms in crescent lunge with the front knee bent. As you exhale next time, nice rotation, twist to your right, keep your gaze down on the floor. Inhale, come back to the center. Exhale, step all the way to the front of the mat in Tadasana Mountain Pose. Place your hands in Namaste and your body weight on your left leg for three pose. Vikrasana on the other side, so this time is the right knee reaching up. Open to the right and place your right foot down on the floor. Again, keep your gaze on a focus spot down on the floor. If you, like me, have cats or maybe a dog who is playing around, that is not a good spot to look at when you're looking for balance. Too distracting <laughs> and also most of the time they are moving, so better to focus on something on the floor that is not moving. Also, they are too cute, so we get distracted, let's face it. Let's bring the right knee back to the center for flying warrior three. The torso parallel to the floor, back leg parallel as well. Keep your gaze down on the floor, the spine is elongating here. Exhale, release the right foot down on the floor and with your next inhalation, rise up in crescent lunge, arms parallel to each other, shoulders relax. Exhale, twist to your left side, open your arms on a T-shape. Inhale, come back to the center. Exhale, step all the way forward. Tadasana. Inhale, bend the knees, Utkatasana chair. Exhale, hands in Namaste, gentle twist to your right side. You can stay up or lower in the elbow just outside the knee. One more breath in here, looking up to the ceiling or down on the floor. Inhale, back to the center, chair pose, Utkatasana. Exhale, twist on the other side, up or lower down. One breath in here, breathing in, breathing out. Inhale, back to center, arms up. Exhale, release everything down, finding your way to come to sit. Extend your legs in front of you. For Janu Shirsasana, we bend the right knee to the chest and open the knee to the right. You can place a bolster under the buttocks and keep the left knee slightly bent. Inhale, extend the spine like you wanna grow taller and exhale and move forward from your hips. Don't move from your shoulders, so move from your hips, maybe two centimeters. Keep your hands on the floor. If you wanna keep it a bit more active, you can place the hands just on the outside of your ankles or maybe even use a strap or a sweater under the left foot. However, please don't pull, respect the body boundaries and be kind to your body. It's the only place that we have to live. Keep your gaze down on the floor.
And as you inhale, move up with the head and the chest. Wild thing variation, we place the right hand down on the floor. The left foot come for the floor and the hips move up any amount. The chest is opening, maybe the left arm reaches over the head. As you exhale, release everything down with the buttocks also touching the floor. Come back with the right knee to the center and extend both legs. Feel free to shake your legs here. Janushir Shasana on the other side, we bend the left knee this time, opening to the left. The left foot is closer to the, or maybe even touching, the inside of your right leg. And again, you can always keep the right knee slightly bent. As you inhale, again, grow taller, extending the spine. And as you exhale, slightly rotate to your right leg, if you want to, and fall forward any amount. Keep your gaze down on the floor. You can work here in strengthening the muscles of the back if you keep your spine straight and thinking like you want to elongate the spine and the crown of the head reaching forward with your chin coming inward and upward. If you want to keep it a bit more yin and relax instead around the spine, you keep the gaze toward your belly. Inhale, moving up with your head and the chest, wild thing. Your left hand down on the floor behind you. Right foot reaching for the floor, the hips moving up any amount. Maybe opening with the chest and extending the right arm over the head. Exhale, spiral down, coming back on the floor. For Baddha Konasana, the seated bad angle, we bend also the right knee so that we can place the feet together, the soil of the feet touching. Distantiate your feet from your pubic bone so that the knees are okay and you can keep the knees all the way up, maybe placing the pillows under the knees as a support. Now if placing the hands on the feet becomes something like this, because everything is closing and kind of contracting, we are actually trying to do the opposite. So if you can, open a bit because maybe there is a bit of tension in the shoulders, that's okay. So instead of the hands forward, then place your hand backward placing something under the buttocks so that it's elevated and it helps you a bit and your hands behind you as a support. You can even use the wall behind you or a wardrobe, a solid wardrobe if you have it. And give time to the hips to open. If instead there is already mobility in the hips, the knees are falling closer to the floor, then keep your hands on the feet in front of you and maybe moving forward from your hips maybe rounding the spine and looking toward the belly. We stay a few more breaths in here. Aware of thoughts or memories that might arise to the mind. And when we notice that we got distracted, we can choose to step back from those rumination of the mind and to come back inside the body, noticing the physical sensations and using the breath as a tool, as an anchor to the present moment. So that our yoga practice becomes not only a nice mobility or movement exercise, but also a practice of mindfulness, of awareness of the present moment, maybe even a somatic experience where we are aware of our body, of our breath flowing. As you inhale, rise up with the head and the chest. For Upavista Konasana, we open the legs on a V shape. Maybe it's a small V or maybe it's a bigger V. Bend the knees as you need and keep your knees and toes facing up to the ceiling and again if you notice that you're falling forward if something is tensing and closing then use the bolster underneath the buttocks and place your hands behind you this is true for all forward fold and when you want to move into forward fold because maybe there is a bit of mobility already there then always make sure that you're moving from the hips instead of keeping sinking back kind of in a panda position really cute as well but not very useful for us and 
instead of moving like this, like from the shoulders, we try to extend the spine first, finding the mobility in the hips, maybe helping ourselves with the bolster, bending the knees, and then maybe moving forward any amount from the hips with the spine that is just following that direction. Stay a few more breaths in here, keeping the gaze on the floor. Inhaling, moving up with the head and the torso. Exhale, close your legs. Then bend the knees and allow yourself to lie down on your back. You can also curl over one side to come down on the floor. We move with the breath into bridge pose. So place your feet firmly on the floor, a bit closer to your buttocks. Your knees parallel to each other and your hands are resting next to your buttocks. The shoulders are opening, you create a bit of space here in the chest with the shoulder blades coming closer together on your back. Keep your chin to your chest, looking up to the ceiling, press with your feet and as you inhale move up with the buttocks, the lower back, the middle back, maybe the upper back as well, swinging the arms in a circular motion over the head. As you exhale next time, start releasing the whole spine down on the floor, one vertebra at a time, and circle back your arms so that the hands also release down on the floor with the buttocks. And again, inhaling, pressing up, unfolding the spine into bridge pose with the arms reaching over the head, slow and mindful movement here. Exhale, release everything down. Let's do it one more time. Feel free to use your own breath pace. No need to follow mine. Next time you are down, bend your knees for happy baby. Your feet are facing the ceiling. You can grab the uh, inside of the knees or maybe the outside of your legs maybe even the outside of your feet for someone you can play around here rocking gently side to side or maybe playing with the extension and flexion of your spine especially with the tailbone reaching up and then the tailbone reaching down keep your chin to the chest so that we don't Hyperextend the cervical spine. And let's come back, releasing the hands next to the buttocks and extending the legs as we can, giving here a vigorous shake to those legs. Maybe exhale through the mouth for a couple of times. Imagine those worries and preoccupations, those heavy thoughts releasing down, shake them off, leave it to the ground to take care of. And then start slowing down your shaking, coming back to your regular breath. And then bend the knees to your chest. We go for a final twist, releasing the knees to the left. We extend the right arm to the right, twisting to the right side. Inhale, moving up to the center with your knees. Exhale, we twist on the other side, the knees fall into the right, we twist to the left. And then come back to the center with your knees 
and hug your knees to your chest. Give me yourself a nice hug, well deserved. Then release your feet down on the floor, open the knees out down on the floor and then swing one leg at a time, extending both legs in Shavasana, corpse pose, allowing the feet to open outward. Your buttocks relax on the floor. You can keep your hands down on the floor, maybe palms facing up, receiving, or you can release them on your belly for an extra touch with your own breath. Allow the shoulders to become heavy, to come closer to the floor. Maybe wear a blanket or an extra sweater on you. If it's okay, close your eyes. And if for any reason you don't like Shavasana, maybe like me at the beginning of my yoga journey, I felt too exposed and it didn't really feel safe. If that's your case or you simply don't like Shavasana, then I invite you to curl toward one side, either staying here in side child pose or to come up into a sitting position, maybe using a block or a bolster under your buttocks. So find your position, I'm gonna sit because I wanna lead a short meditation. But feel free to stay lying down in Shavasana for an extra rest. Once you find your position, refrain from changing to try to adjust the position. Instead, instead allow a bit of uh, resting, not doing, just being. Bring your awareness to your feet. And if you have a good imagination, then picture with the eyes of your mind the green and fresh roots growing from your feet, rooting down on the ground, reaching for energy and nourishment, eradicating yourself in the present moment and taking all the energy that you need. And then travel up on your legs. Again, maybe growing fresh roots. Grounding yourself, taking all the energy that you need. Traveling up on the hips, rooting down and recharging. Move up on the back, lower back, middle back, upper back. Maybe again growing fresh and green roots. At first they are small and then they become a bit bigger and stronger, rooting even deeper down to the ground, to the earth, taking energy, rooting in the earth element, maybe reaching even further down in the planet for the fire element at the core of the earth. taking all the energy and the nourishment that you need. Move your awareness up to the shoulders now. See if your roots can help your shoulders to release down. Can you allow yourself to be supported by the ground, by the earth, 
instead of carrying the weight of the world on your shoulders. Reach up on the back of your head. Again, rooting down and taking all the energy that you need. Till the whole body is rooted down in the present moment, supported by the ground, nourished and recharged. If you're lying down in Shavasana with a slow and mindful transition, come up to sit, keeping your eyes closed or a soft gaze on the floor. your palms in Namaste in front of your heart center. Setting now an intention for the rest of your day or the rest of your evenings. Getting clear in where you're going next. Loka Samasta Sukino Bhavantu. May all beings be happy and free. And may my thoughts, words and actions contribute somehow to this happiness and freedom for all. Jai. Thank you for practicing with me. Namaste. I hope you enjoyed this class. Let me know how it went in the comment section. Also feel free to ask me questions if you have any questions or doubts. As usual, take care of you and see you next time. Bye, ciao!